Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. I thought we'd learn to play the piano today. What do you think about that for an idea? No, just joking. Um, following on from my um, comments the other day when I was saying about um, creative, balancing creativity and consumption and uh, using inexpensive paper to paint on in order to be more relaxed about the whole cost thing. Suddenly struck me this morning, I'd seen this before done, um, but I've never tried it, so I thought I would give it a go. Um, in our house, we have um, a piano and some guitars and um, some flutes and recorders and all sorts of musical instruments. And um, we've also got a lot of sheet music. And some of that music was bought, some of it goes back to when I was a child and was learning my grades in piano. Some of it um, similarly is Tamsin's, goes back a while. Some of it was bought from Oxfam shops or I remember we bought some from a, a music shop in Tunbridge Wells once. Uh, well, it wasn't a music shop actually, it was just a bookshop uh, in Tunbridge Wells down in the Pantiles. And um, some of it was given to Tamsin. She used to belong to the um, Exeter Recorder Orchestra. And um, somebody was clearing out and had a load of music they needed to get rid of, so they gave it to her. And she didn't know what to do with it, so she's passed a lot of it on to somebody else. But some of it we still have. And um, it's just sitting, taking up space in the cupboard. And I thought to myself today, Waste not, want not. This is, is this or is this not paper? Yes, it is. And what's more, it's old paper. This comes from a book here. It has no value. And before anyone has a fit and says you shouldn't waste books, um, I'm not. Because if it's not used, it's being wasted. And I can assure everyone that nobody is ever going to. This is obviously one of the ones that we were given by the people in Exeter who used to have it. Um, shouldn't 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 show that I suppose, uh, but I don't care. Um, this is when was this dated? I don't know. It's ancient, um, but you can see it's pretty old. That means that the paper is good quality. This one says on it price two and sixpence. Two and sixpence. Yes, that was even before my time. Copyright nineteen twelve. I don't think this one is as old as that, but it's certainly pre-decimalization. So it would be about um, at least from the 60s, 70s. Uh, but I think it's probably older than that. It says here, this was written in Bourne Bournemouth on November, in November 1912. It's the sort of thing that nobody does anymore, unless you're really serious. So anyway, I'm going to paint on top of those sheets. But first of all, uh, I'll show you what I did just very briefly. Just now I did this and if you don't like it, scroll on by. And uh, here we go. I'm going to have another go on this one, this piece of paper here, I think. Should I do it on that side or should I do it on that side? I think I'll do it on that side, why not? Um, can you see it all? Let me move the camera a little bit up. I'm going to use my Kiritaki paints because they are very tolerant. I think I might do it this way around. They're very tolerant of the surface that you are using. Move that now too. So I think they're probably the most reliable, but you could obviously use whatever paints you happen to have. And if you want to mix white with them to make them more opaque, you can do that too. Uh, as we talked about the other day, just uh, fiddling around here a little bit. You can see most of the paints, can't you? Um, so the colours I'm going to use today, I should sort them out so that I've got them in one place. So I'm going to be using this purpley colour. And what colour is that? It doesn't say, uh, it's not cobalt violet, I'm going to put that there. 
So that, and that green, not this colour, I don't think. Mm, no, probably not. Um, these ones here, that one and that one. And um, maybe black is over here. I'm going to need some black. So I'm going to put that up there. And um, what else? Blue, that was it. Blue, blue, blue. This one here, perhaps. I wish they'd written the names on them underneath, but they didn't on this set. They did on the Art Nouveau set, though. This is number 67. That makes it indigo. Uh, that'll do. I'm not fussy. And I might want one of these lighter. I might want some of the other colours, but I don't know yet. So That's basically the set of colours that I'm going to be using, I think, to start off with, but it's entirely random. Just going to have a quick slurp of coffee. Um, I've got a sort of idea of what I'm going to do from the one that I just did. So I'm going to sort of base it on that. So I'll put that out of sight over there. You don't need to be, uh, you don't need to see that. It's not that good. Uh, so I'm going to start off by putting some flowers in. I'm using Princeton Aqua Elite, size 12, and I'm going to sit down. I, uh, I oiled my chair the other day because the wheels were sticking and um, I've oiled it and cleaned it. And now you know what's happening. When I sit down, I go shooting halfway across the room because uh, the, the wheels are turning so easily now. So I've started off like that and I've just realized that I picked out the wrong color. So I'm just gonna swap that out, for that one, because I really wanted this dark pink. Well, that's okay, doesn't matter. So I'm just doing a, a four petaled flower there and I'm going to put the four, uh, four petaled flowers in first. It's a bit like a tongue twister. Um, just, just do them sort of loosely. I think it's probably best to put the flowers in first when you're doing something like this. Um, and I'm going to say that the paper is lovely and smooth and seems to be taking the paint quite, quite well. And my next flowers are going to be orange with a bit of brown in them. Probably a bit more brown than that. And uh, just do them like this. Sort of a bit like, bit like these, but sort of sideways on. This is cadmium orange and um, I think that's burnt sienna. If you... Uh, and then I'm going to do a couple over here a little bit darker. So that's the same colour, but with a little bit of red in it. Smaller ones. It's really nice painting on this paper, actually. It's silky. I think I've run out of energy with the roughness of traditional watercolour paper. Um, just going to pick up a palette here because I need to just check my colour. I said this was indigo and that would do. And yes, I think that probably will. So we're going to put in some, some leaves scattered around. So I'll just, just do the shape of the leaf and then the stem. And I'm holding the um, brush sort of more or less vertically for this. more or less. And so I'm going to do several of those, but at the same time we need some green. So I'm going to take some cadmium yellow and mix it with some of this indigo. And we'll just put some stems in. The wonderful thing about um, modern watercolour painting is that you don't have to uh, you don't have to be careful. 
just, you know, let the brush twizzle in your hand. It doesn't matter. Drop in darker colours and let them do their own thing. This is the, the whole point of the exercise. Um, if you've watched uh, Emma, Emma Lefebvre's most recent Monday mental health video, you'll see her putting blobs of water onto the paper and then um, dropping colour into them. And that's basically what I'm doing here. That's, so that's why you learn that technique, so that you can use it in, in a more complicated painting. So I'm just dropping in, in the same way, some black for the centres of those flowers. And uh, anyone who says to you, you should never use black in your watercolour is missing a trick, because black is actually a great colour. And I'm just going to put in some leaves around this flower here and let them let them run. They, they can run. They, they don't have to be restricted. This is this is really fun because I've never done it before. And um, a little bit more darker green for this one here. I've never painted on top of music before. So, you know, it's first time for everything. Just putting in the bottom parts of these flowers here, and this one's going up. So don't be afraid to let them overlap. And um, let me see, I think we'll mix some red with a bit of indigo to give us a darker red. And then we might just drop some of that in, in some places on some of the petals. And if, if it's dried a little bit too much and it's not running, oh, I'll use that while it's on the brush to do me some circles. Not circles, so they're, well, they are circles, aren't they? Berries. Little touches like that can make a big difference, either positive or negative. Um, what was I going to do with that? Oh yeah, I wanted another leaf here. Uh, oh, this one, that's it, that one. And you can go in and just drop, I was going to say, if, if it's dried up a little bit, with this technique, you can just drop in some some more water and let it run. And the other thing, don't be afraid to dab it out if you feel it's gone a little bit dark there. So just take your tissue, not the one that you've just blown your nose on, and, and just pick up some of the colour. And then you can smooth it out again. And best thing at this point is just to let it, let it do its own thing. Because the more you fiddle, the worse it will get. And um, we can put in some more leaves. Let's have some sort of yellowy green leaves. You can get a nice yellow green by mixing cadmium yellow with some, um, what do you call it? Indigo. Indigo. There we are. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do a few this kind of leaf. Just dabbing it down like that. That's just to give a background. And you could, if actually, what you could do here, you could join these together, rather than just having them sitting there looking as if they've lost the will to live, or lost the plot. Okay, and then back to the yellowy green. I 
I'll try not to put my sleeve in my painting. Just turn that around a bit. And when when you've when you've done this, um, you can embellish it if you want with ink. You can come in with some white ink or some black ink if you want to, if you feel it needs it. And uh, it may or may not. The weather's terrible again today. Oh, now look, see, I've got one blue and that's wrong because you can't just have one of anything. One dark blue, no good, need another one. Where am I gonna put it? Oh dear, I have to draw it behind, won't I? And sometimes though, that's the best thing that could have happened. So we'll just bring that in. See how my hand's shaking today? Too much coffee. But that's actually linking it all together nicely. So we'll just do that. And uh, we need some more down here, probably. Yes. That's what it needed. Crying out for it. Overlapping. I think indigo is possibly my favorite color. Um, let's put one here. Inspired by uh, Maud Lewis, I'm not going to forget her name again, the Canadian lady from um, somewhere in the Maritimes, I believe. I've forgotten. Was it Nova Scotia? I think it was. Uh, who painted her house and everything. If she ran out of paper or cardboard, she, she painted on the walls. <laughs> She's rather sweet. Apparently she had terrible arthritis from an early age and was quite disabled, but she still managed to paint beautifully. So as an inspiration to us all, all us old fogies who are in our last years, most productive uh, ever and uh, not too worried about depression these days, are we? I, my daughter who is 40, yeah something, I don't know, 40 something, is um, much, she's not depressed. She's not that kind of person. She's never been depressed, but she worries. And she has reason to, but you know, I'm past it now. I used to be, I, I actually, uh, I, I did, I did suffer from depression when I was young. I didn't know it because in those days we didn't really talk about it very much. Um, mental illness was, taboo in those days and my husband was depressed as well and in the end we got divorced because uh, I couldn't live with his outbursts and I didn't know that he was depressed. When he remarried, he married somebody who many, many years later, who, who I don't know, they got she got him on pills. But when I was married to him, it was a real stigma to go to the doctor and say, I think I'm depressed. He didn't want to do that. And it never occurred to me that he might be depressed. I just thought he was bad tempered. Anyway, that was me and that was then and this is now and shut up. Uh, right, so let's put just a little line of dark blue in here. And then I'm going to whack the hairdryer on this. And honestly, if you've got any paper lying around, um, I saw somebody doing it on uh, what she said was uh, ledger paper, so it had handwriting on it, somebody's bills and things like that had, had. Um... but I don't know if it's really true ledger paper. I need to look that up and find out whether it's actually genuine or whether it's just printed to look like it. Um, but this is genuine, old, quite old, sheet music that you've probably got in the house and I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to do any 
embellishments or anything. I'm just going to dry it and then I'll come back and show it to you in a second. Okay, so that's dry now and um, I just think I sort of forgot to put the leaves behind uh, this flower here. So I'm just going to paint over um, the other things that are there just to show you that it doesn't matter. And when you've finished it, it actually looks much more coherent if you've, you've got these things overlapping. It's quite important not to worry about overlap. It's a good thing, overlap. And um, so there we are. I will take this one out of its mount because I'm just going to show you what this looks like when it's in the mount and when that's dry. And I think that that makes quite an interesting experience. It's the kind of thing you can do in a journal or in a junk journal even and use, make photocopies of this and use it. If, if you photocopy it and it comes out lighter, that's what you actually want for um, embellishing your pages in your journal or whatever. And uh, we can use it also for uh, reverse colouring pages make photocopies of this or use the original if you want and put it inside your uh, your own reverse colouring book and then you can go into this again with with these things which everybody ought to have these these ones are by Poetique there's loads and loads of them out there they're just brush watercolour pens and you can do all sorts of really fancy stuff uh, on top of something like this. You could also paint a background wash and maybe I'll do that um, in a minute. Perhaps I'll even do it now. So rather than finishing off here, perhaps I'll just take another sheet of paper from this book and show you what I mean, because I think, um, I think that might make an interesting um, background. So we would, what we would do is we would um, just decide what are we going to do. We'll have, um, should we have greens and blues? So just dabbing in colour and we'll see when it dries whether or not it makes a good Oh, it's so smooth, this paper. But if you live in England, dash down the Oxfam shop and get yourself some. And in, in Canada, we used to have the most amazing thrift shops in Canada. Oh, my God. Um, Value Village, was it called Value Village? And uh, I used to go in there and go shopping. And that, you know, I don't have that kind of money that I could go into Eaton's or the Bay or something like that and just buy whatever I wanted. But I could go into the um, Value Village and just pick up anything I fancied and stick it in my cart and take it home and for next to nothing. Just fantastic. Uh, I used to love that. That was one of the best things about Canada. Uh, I don't know. Do you still have Value Village in Canada? I expect you do. It was in Calgary. Um, where was the one I used to go to? Maybe it was near Marlborough up in, I, I lived in Pine Ridge in, uh, well, I only lived there. I lived in several different places in Calgary. Um, I don't remember which one it was I used to go to. But uh, yes, that was fun. That was quite good fun. So let me see, another blue. It's a bit of ultramarine. I do miss Canada sometimes, but I think, well, I don't know. I always said if the S-H-I-T hits the fan, that's an expression we have in England for when things go really wrong. You never know. I used to say to Tamsin, you need Canadian citizenship because if the S-H-I-T hits the F-A-N, then, you know, we might need to go back. We might have to go back. We might want to go back. Or I used to say, if I get ill and uh, we can't, you know, get the right health care, or if Magdi does, then we'll go back. But 
Yeah, you never know, do you, where life's going to take you? We're pretty much embedded here in France. I don't know. Anyway, so that's the reflection of my mind at the moment, I presume, since I try to think about completely different things when I'm painting something like this and just let myself just, you know, uh, randomly wander and do randomly random things. And so I'm lifting out at the moment just to give it some space to breathe. And then I'm going to let that dry when it's dry and dry it naturally. Let it dry naturally. I'm ruining this brush. You shouldn't do that with a brush like that, Diane. That's not a good idea. That was an expensive brush that was. Um, yeah, so we'll let that dry. And then maybe uh, in a future video, we might paint on top of it or draw on top of it. Or, you know, that could go into my journal, my junk journal, my diary or whatever. I've started keeping a diary again. Uh, every day seems to be the same as the day before. I'm running out of things to say. Right, what I'm going to do now is say goodbye. So I'll let you go. And don't forget to like and subscribe, turn on notifications, and please comment below because I love your comments. And if I don't get around to replying to all of them in the first day or so, um, please don't be discouraged and do come back and comment again. Um, but, you know, with two or three hundred comments a day, it's starting to get to the point where I'm having a bit of trouble keeping up. But I do love reading them and I do read them all. I sound like Russell Grant, Russell Brand, Russell Grant, Russell Brand. He, I remember him saying that when he first started his channel. I do read them all, even though I don't answer them. Um, and I, at the time, was getting about three comments a day. So we've uh, reached a different level now, which is great fun and very exciting. And I'm going to go and get lunch ready in a minute. So I'll let you go and I'll see you again soon. Bye, everybody. Bye bye.